Welcome to the worldwide free seminar of the Family Dog Project, live from Budapest. The event is proudly sponsored by Purina. Thank you. Yes, indeed, as you can see from the slide, I'm now going to talk about oxytocin. Uh, I know it's not a very good start for a popular talk to put up chemical molecules like that on the very first slide. But I thought I could do that since oxytocin is such a popular and well-known uh, molecule nowadays. And why I'm saying this is because if you just go to internet and Google oxytocin, you will find all sorts of funny pictures suggesting that oxytocin is this love hormone that makes our lives better. And you can even buy such products that have the pattern of uh, oxytocin on them. Uh, we will see it's not entirely true, so oxytocin does regulate social behavior, but not just the positive, but also the negative side of it. And what we know so far is uh, mostly from human studies, so oxytocin does indeed uh, regulate um, social memory, all sorts of social attachments, relationships, and uh, complex behaviors such as empathy or trust, um, but uh, we don't know that much about dogs yet. And uh, this is the question that we are going to address now. Luckily, there are a couple of uh, studies which have also been covered in the social uh, media. So uh, one of them is uh, our last year's uh, paper, um, which appeared on a Scientific American blog. And here we found that uh, variations of a gene within the oxytocin system are related to how dogs behave in certain social situations. And this other one uh, is a Japanese uh, study that has found that prolonged eye contact between the dog and its owner makes uh, <coughs> both uh, uh, partners to uh, increase their oxytocin levels. So we can say that uh, so far we have evidence that uh, the genetic background of oxytocin relates to social behavior and also that uh, certain social stimulation increases oxytocin levels. What remains to be seen is whether by uh, giving oxytocin to the dogs, we can change their behavior. And this is what I'm going to, ah, yeah, you missed the uh, back of the side. And this is um, what I'm going to investigate now, and I will present uh, two studies where we gave oxytocin to the dogs and, uh, and tested how their behavior changed. So first of all, we had a, a so-called cognitive bias test, which is basically an optimism uh, test based on the glass half full, half empty paradigm. Uh, we know already that uh, the way people or other animals interpret this kind of uh, ambivalent uh, stimuli relates to how uh, uh, positive uh, they are in general, how optimistic uh, they are in life. And this is an important uh, welfare indicator for many species, including dogs. Uh, and why we thought that this uh, might relate to oxytocin is uh, because of, uh, first of all, oxytocin is connected to optimism in humans. And second, because in uh, tests that we do with dogs, uh, these situations are always inherently social. So there is a human experimenter who presents the stimuli that the dogs have to respond to. And as oxytocin is uh, related to social uh, stimuli, we thought that uh, even if it's not uh, really about optimism, there still might be a relationship. So based on these two points, we hypothesized that uh, by giving uh, oxytocin to the dogs, we might uh, induce a more optimistic state in them. So here is how the test uh, went. Uh, first, we had a, a training phase for the dogs where we placed the food container to uh, one side of the room and uh, uh, there it was always empty, so that was the negative side. And on the other side, the food container always had a food item in it. That was the positive side. And by the end of the training, the dogs uh, uh, went uh, really fast for the uh, food, and they went only slowly for the no food location. And then we had an ambivalent uh, trial when we placed the food container in the middle and uh, wanted to see how the dogs reacted to this half full, half empty container, whether they went there fast or whether they went there slow. And based on this, we could calculate an optimism uh, index that we used in this study. We had four test uh, conditions. So first of all, we were interested in the difference between uh, giving oxytocin or placebo to the dogs. And also, we had a social and a non-social uh, test uh, situation, which is important because, as I mentioned, oxytocin is related to social behaviors. Uh, and we wanted to take that apart from, from optimism. The difference is very simple. In the social situation, there was always a human experimenter who presented the food containers to the dogs. 
while in the other case, the uh, experimenter was behind the curtain and the dogs could only see the food container appearing and disappearing. And here is what we find. If we put the results on an axis from pessimistic empty glass response to optimistic uh, full glass response, we can see that the dogs that received oxytocin were more optimistic than the placebo condition. And also, interestingly, within the oxytocin group, those dogs that participated in the social condition were even more optimistic than the ones in the non-social condition. So if we sum this up, then we can uh, say, first of all, that oxytocin does have an effect on dogs' behavior, which is an important point to start with. And also that uh, whether the task is social or non-social uh, has an effect as well. Uh, of course, we were very happy to find these results, and it would be easy for me to claim that, okay, now we have a treatment to make dogs more optimistic, and hooray, we have solved the welfare problem. Uh, of course, we need more studies uh, for that, because um, uh, this was only a one-term treatment, and we cannot be sure whether long-term effects remain the same, although we do hope. Okay, and now for the next um, study, we use the threatening approach uh, test uh, uh, because, uh, uh, as I said, oxytocin is traditionally uh, connected uh, to positive behaviors, uh, at least in the media, what we say. But negative behaviors, such as, for example, fear or aggression, are also very important, both from the point of view of the owners and also for, for dogs because uh, Many dogs go to shelters, for example, because of problem behaviors. So um, again, what we know uh, from this negative side comes uh, from uh, human data. We do know that oxytocin regulates uh, negative uh, behaviors, mostly in the positive direction, I have to say. So for example, it reduces social fear. But for example, in case of uh, aggression, the results are contradictory. So it has been found that in some situations, oxytocin decreases aggression, but there are other situations where it doesn't or it even increases it. So we couldn't quite formulate a clear hypothesis for this test. We just wanted to see uh, how oxytocin changes behavior in a mildly threatening situation. And here is what we did. You can find a photo of the threatening uh, approach uh, test here. Basically, the dog is held on a lead and then um, other human, either an unfamiliar experimenter or the owner, approaches the dog very slowly and looking straight into the dog's eye. Uh, and the uh, dogs uh, were divided into two groups. They received either oxytocin or placebo, as this is the effect that we wanted to test. And as I said, uh, we were interested to see how the dogs react to their owner or to an unfamiliar experimenter. And what we were looking at is how they reacted to this human approaching them, so whether they were aggressive, whether they avoided it, or whether, on the other hand, they were friendly. And also, uh, we coded another behavior, namely looking back. So how many times the dog looked back to the human holding the lead? Because this is an important uh, behavior when dogs look back to human and uh, sort of ask for information and, uh, and further instructions. Uh, and we asked the owners to fill in a questionnaire about dog aggression because we wanted to know in general how aggressive dogs are uh, with other humans. And what we found first uh, for how dogs reacted to this approaching humans, we have this uh, dimension from aggressive to friendly. And uh, <coughs> not surprisingly, dogs were more friendly towards their owner than towards uh, an experiment experimenter. However, we were surprised to see that in case of the experimenter approaching condition, there was absolutely no effect of oxytocin or placebo, so they behaved the same way uh, independently of the treatment. And in case of the owner, oxytocin even decreased uh, friendliness. So uh, the dogs were less friendly towards their owners when they um, uh, had received oxytocin. Um, as I said, this is um, somewhat surprising because uh, based on what we hear from the media, we would expect oxytocin to make everything more positive. But in fact, uh, there are several uh, uh, studies showing that oxytocin doesn't make uh, people or other species more positive, but in fact, it makes the, them um, more, um, um, so it makes, uh, makes them uh, realize better the, the social situations and uh, in this case this is what uh, happened, that they realized that the owner is behaving in a, in a strange way and then they change their behavior to less friendly. Uh, and again we have another result with the questionnaire that uh, the dogs that were rated more aggressive by their owners also behave more aggressively in the test, uh, which is nice and not surprising I guess. 
And if we take the other behavior, looking back, we have again a scale from not looking back to looking back many times. And here what we find is that uh, dogs look back more at their owner, so when the owner is uh, holding the lead. And uh, for both the experimenter and the owner, they look back more after the oxytocin uh, treatment. Um, and with the questionnaire here, we found uh, no relationship, uh, which is obviously because the questionnaire was about aggression and this behavior is not aggression. So if uh, we sum this up, uh, the first question, whether oxytocin could be a treatment to decrease fear and aggression, it doesn't seem so based on our results. So it's, it's not that simple that we just give oxytocin and the dogs will behave better. Uh, however, we did find that it increases uh, looking back uh, behavior, which can be very uh, important in everyday situations because once the, the dog and the owner have made eye contact, the owner has uh, the, the possibility to instruct the dog and uh, uh, somehow uh, modify uh, the dog's uh, uh, behavior so the dog can be more uh, controllable uh, because the owner has, has a chance to make instructions. So taken together, these two studies uh, show that oxytocin has an effect on dog behavior, both positive and uh, negative effect, in fact. And I would say that uh, these are very uh, important from an applied point of view because both optimism and friendliness relates to animal welfare and uh, the dog-human uh, uh, bond. Uh, and I would also want to stress that uh, this effect, so how the dogs react to oxytocin, is modulated by, by many other factors. We have investigated the sociality or non-sociality of the test uh, context or whether it is the owner or around familiar human interacting and baseline measures such as uh, the baseline aggression of the dog, but also I can imagine that uh, other personality issues would have an effect. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, and I'm open for questions. Thank you very much.